Hello, my friends, my family. Today, we continue with diet. Why diet? Because our health and well-being in general depends on it. Now, almost everyone is aware that there are nutritional types, that not every diet suits everybody, right? Well, today we are going to debunk this with observation. We are going to forget about all the experts, all the Mercolas, all the doctors, all the avocados, uh, everything what we hear from self-proclaimed or authorized experts by the industry. And we are going to examine a little bit how digestion works and what diet is the best. And instead of going from the outside and checking how our mouth moves and how what type of a teeth we have, how long is our intestine, uh, how big is our stomach, uh, we're gonna, what type of uh, digestion we have, are we omnivores, um, carnivores or, or herbivores. We are going to neglect all of this and we are going to start actually from the cell itself. Now, a human cell is like any other animal cell. It has a membrane made out of cholesterol, of protein and, and fat. Now, this is the major difference between animals and plants, because plants, membranes, cellular membranes, are made out of cellulose, sugar. So. For a cell, when cell needs energy, it produces it. Well, majority of the energy comes from the heart. But we are now going to focus on the small part of energy that comes from the food. And uh, what is cellular food? Well, cells can use only two sources of food for their energy. One is fat, and the other one is glucose. So the fat it gets from triglycerides. The other, the glyceride, glyceride is a transporter of fats for energetic, as energetic supply, where a cholesterol is a building material. So another story. We are focusing now triglycerides and glucose itself, not any kind of a sugar, just glucose. So even in medical school, when we are learning about the production of energy within a cell, and we are considering human cell, the whole Krebs or citric cycle is being explained on glucose. Why? Because again, misleading has to take place. And since a sugar is found always in blood, it's always present, we are being told that sugar is the main fuel that fuels the cells, and this is why Krebs cycle is explained on glucose. So what the heck is triglycerides doing in our blood? And why do we not have um, any deposit of glucose in the body, but we have huge deposits of fat? Well, this is not important. Don't look at it that way. We're just focus on the, what we are being told by uh, experts. So let's skip the expert part and let's just observe. So we have a lot of fat. We don't have a glucose storage. Obviously, fat is there for a purpose. The only purpose that fat has in our body is to become a building block if it's transported through protein called cholesterol, or it becomes energy source if it is transported through glycerol in a form of triglycerides. There is no other purpose of triglyceride in the body than to fuel the energy of the cell. Now, what other purpose is there for sugar? Well, purpose for sugar is 
to create amino acids. And uh, levels of sugar are always low in the blood. Everything is in our body. Um, everything is measured perfectly, calibrated. And uh, if sugar calibration stays normal, the level of sugar is low and it cannot go into the cells. Cells do not absorb it, they don't want it. And when process has to be done in a cell that requires sugar, then transporter is sent, which we call GLUT, which is, is, is also protein, which captures the glucose from the blood and takes it into the cell, which means no insulin is needed. So we, why does pancreas create insulin if it's not needed? Well, because I explained in another video, which I called a dual energy source for the cells, that in certain situations in high stress, when stress hormones are released in the blood, stress hormone actually breaks down the connection between, between protein and glucose within a glycogen. And then glycogen becomes a source of glucose but only in stressful situations. And since only few organs are required to function in a stressful situation, those are organs to save our lives. So which are those? It's a brain and it's a muscles. Brain has to quickly find solution and muscle have to, muscles have to do the job. So only here you have accumulation of glycogen. And then in a case we are trapped in the situation longer than necessary. And we also have to start breathing faster and more oxygen has to come and other operations will increase. Well, liver also has deposits of glycogen and only liver can donate it to other organs. So if muscles have to work longer, here comes additional glucose that was liberated from glycogen in the liver. Glycogen from muscles or from brain can never be pushed into the blood. They are made there for the for purpose of emergencies. Now, since proteins have to be make, made, and base of proteins are amino acids. Well, amino acids, base of amino acids are sugars that need to be sugar brought in. And this is why we always have constant level of sugar. And the sugar we don't have to take from outside. Actually, the only sugar that nature is programmed to give us is fructose to entice us. And fructose is very sweet, so touch of fructose it is going to make the whole fruit sweet. So we, we are under the impression that we are taking a lot of sugar, when in fact we are just taking a lick of fructose. Of course, our cells will not take fructose, so our liver will have to transform it, use it for something, so it transforms it into fat and in the process produces also uric acid. But normally we have low sugar absorption because we have a small amount of glute, so not much sugar will be taken from the intestines. And originally we do not have access to any other sugar than to fructose. So since it doesn't increase production of, of uh, insulin, because insulin is absolutely unnecessary. Insulin becomes necessary in a stress situation because if now uh, sugar, uh, glucose has to be pushed from a liver. L sugar finds itself in the blood. As blood levels of sugar increase, cells don't want to take them. So insulin has to be squirted in to relax the membrane so the sugar penetrates into the cell. So they can, it can be used for burning. Normally it's not used for burning. But with the wrong diet, 
when we start eating dietary carbs, I always specify dietary. Dietary carbs are carbs in which we, which we have manipulated and destroyed the coating of glucose in nature, which is cellulose. Once when cellulose is destroyed, now glucose becomes available for our absorption. And we regularly destroy cellulose coating by cooking, heating. When you heat plants, you break the cellulose, you release, you release glucose. Glucose is not sweet, so you don't even know you are eating sugar. You eat potatoes, rice, pasta, you claim you don't eat sugar, and this is pure glucose. Starch, starch is glucose. It's not sweet at all. Well, I explained this. So now, we are being told that we have a different types. Uh, that the body works differently of different people and has affinity to different foods. Now, this nutritional typing is very popular. And every expert is expert on this, okay? And uh, nutritionists will tell you, wow, well, you see, you have the, you see, you have a wider, structured bones, you are da da da, you look like uh, somebody who lived there and there and these people originally eat this and this type of a food. So, pop, you are from Andes, well, you are a potato kind of person. So, you need potatoes in your diet. Uh, you are Asian looking, look at delicate up. A rice is this is this is your food and we are making stories I mean this our science is full of these stories from physics chemistry all the way down to damaging nutritional science of doctors and nutritionists whatever they are so where is the truth again we start from a cell cell can use glucose and use fat it normally uses fat unless we are in a stress situation when then booster fuel comes in for fast production of energy through glucose. Once when we start eating glucose, dietary carbohydrates, your vegetarian food, your vegan food, you are loading up on glucose. Vegans cannot survive on only raw vegetables or fruits. They have to have something cooked. And anybody who says otherwise, that is doing differently, that only eats raw and only vegetables, is lying. Because I tried it, many, have, many of my clients have tried it, and they have experienced the results. So, or may not be lying, Maybe they are very spiritual and they have reprogrammed their brain because it's all programming. And if you can reprogram your brain that you don't need any food, then you can survive chewing on grass because there is absolutely no nourishment coming from there in type of cellular energy. So now when we go to this typing, even Ayurveda diet is suggesting that yeah there are some people who do better on carbohydrates and then they give a scale and every Ayurveda doctor uh, is aware of this that you know these people have eat uh, can eat more and they do better on rice and these people do better on potatoes on this on meat and this on well why is it so in my other videos, I talk about genes. What is a gene? Gene is a blueprint that is being activated through particular frequencies. Every food is, everything there is, is a frequency, and so is food. And when particular frequency come close to our cells, where the genetic material is, the frequency of this food is going to be recognized, and genes are going to respond and they are going to open the blueprint according to which the cell is going to work the best 
in this type of frequency. But it doesn't mean that the frequency that came is a good frequency. So what happens? That as you eat something and if you keep repeat eating it, your genetic system will adjust to this type of food. And then if you travel and you eat something else, well, since it takes a little time for genetics to adjust, this food that you have eaten now did not agree with you and you'll have problem digesting it. When we are eating wrong food for a long time, also our fauna in intestines is adjusted to it. Flora and fauna adjust very quickly, but the damages on a cellular level occur slowly. Because even when the cell is adjusted now to work the most efficiently on this type of a food that we are eating, still we are not eating the optimal food. So the cell cannot completely adjust. It adjusts in one way so it can work on it, but some readjustment has come on the other way, which in quantum physics we see as a deviation of the normal frequency. And in the short term, it may not show any result, but in the long term, it may show a problems, problems that we call disease. Uh, I see it with vegetarians and I see it with vegans. It doesn't happen right away. In some people it happens faster than in others. It all depends on variety of factors, all connected with what we eat and what we drink and our mindset. Because again, fear is going to take down the voltage and allow our frequency to shift um, much easier than if the cell is properly powered by electricity. So if, let's say I came from Croatia, in Croatia we eat a lot of bread and we eat potatoes, we also eat rice, but majority people prefer potatoes and pasta influenced from Italy, but bread it's a staple food. and. When Croats travel, they have a hard time to find right bread because even the bread is not the same. Uh, it's, for me, it's very hard to find bread. French bread, baguette comes close, but still is not the same. Italians also make similar bread, but still is not the same. So this is how we adjust to particular type of food. And so when we shift, we don't feel it the same and neither does the, our body. But it doesn't mean that one bread is healthier than the other. It is just that it has slightly different vibration, which we recognize. And our cells do too, which means our digestion does too. Worse or stronger difference is when you switch from bread to potato. And then if you switch from potato to rice. It's always different. And then it's different if you eat meat. And now you eat meat with a potato. Completely different mix that does not go really together. And Ayurveda actually says it is a bad combination. Do not eat vegetables, cooked starchy vegetables with meat. Well, in Croatia, I could not imagine eat meat without starch. You always eat meat with bread or meat with potatoes or meat with rice. Of course, digestion suffers. More of the wrong food we start eating, the more deviation starts happening in our body. The, our genetic have to adjust their expression towards this food. So blueprints are opening to give instructions to cell how to do things and cell starts doing, producing other things than normally. 
and it takes away from what it should be doing. I have explained this in another video uh, that even our immune system becomes disarmed when we start eating dietary glucose, dietary carbohydrates. So the best test to do, to do about what is the good diet is just stop eating and allow your body to adjust to food reserves that it has. If you are meant to run on sugar, you have plenty of reserve. If you are meant to run on fat, you have plenty of reserve. If you are meant to run on protein, you have plenty of reserve. And observe what happens when you don't eat. I have video on that as well, showing you that no matter if you are vegan, vegetarian, uh, or meat eater, after let's say five, six days, um, not eating anything, you can just drink water, water with sea salt, and you will start feeling good. And every problem, digestive problem, may ease down because now you are not poisoning yourself. And if you can, if you are a little heavier, you can, uh, you can stay without food longer time because you will be nourished by the fat that you have. But what happens with the fat, you also have toxic uh, garbage that you have stored there while you are eating toxic food. And it may cause some problems. Uh, when these toxins are being eliminated. But this happens when you are working on the less parts of the fat. But at the beginning, your body is doing very well losing the fat and thriving on it and your pains and aches are diminishing, your digestion is calming down, you really feel good. So if you don't overdo it and if you don't take it until your muscles start being chewed up for energy purpose, you will, you will see that your blood, uh, sugar blood levels are always constant. And they are usually between 60 and 90. This is where the sugar should be. When sugar is over 90, you have diabetes. Diabetes is elevated blood sugar. The pre-diabetes and pre-this and pre-that, that's another baloney that doctors and scientists invented. So, your sugar levels should never go to 100. If they go, well, you are doing something wrong. Now, if you have lost the fat and you feel good and you don't want to keep losing fat, so you need to nourish yourself. So if you continue now eating animal fats, you are now nourishing your body with the type of a food that your body was storing. So there is not going to be any shift in your genetic expression. And you continue to be healthy and continue healing and have plenty of energy with small amount of fat daily. Now, what happens when we eat protein? Protein breaks down into amino acids. Amino acids then are being used to create cholesterol or to be used as the building blocks or if there is no need for them they will be broken down into fat not into sugar as we are being told because we have no need for it and then the fat will be deposited in a form of triglyceride or being used as energy it's a longer process but it's process that works very well. Uh, animals in the nature, uh, carnivores, when they um, catch the prey, they first go for the fat. They eat the stomach, they eat the blubber, they need, eat the liver, anything that is fatty. And then they go and eat the muscles. So, does not matter where you are from, does not matter 
what your parents have eaten. It doesn't matter how your bone structure looks. It all matters only on a simple truth that cellular fuel is fat, fat that is distributed through triglyceride and anything that needs the least amount of modification to bring this fat into your body is your best choice of food. And this is animal and animal-based products. There is any discussion on it. Trying to figure out, well, but probiotics should take probiotics. Probiotics are always created to a mixed flora that scientists consider is the right one. The same scientist who tells you that you have to eat carbohydrates. Okay, you, you have elevated blood sugar and your diabetologist, your expert in diabetes, is giving you metformin or insulin and metformin and at the same time telling you, but you have to take a little bit of bread or a little bit of pasta. Otherwise, what? Otherwise, your sugar levels will drop and you will become hypoglycemic. So if your sugar level drops, why to take sugar? The, the idiocracy of all this is the medical science, because it's controlled. Free thinkers are not allowed, only licensed, means brainwashed people, can work in a field for which they are programmed and work there with the program they are given, which is always wrong. There is no such a thing as different nutritional types. There is only different nutritional adjustments, temporary adjustments, adaptations. So you adapt to wrong food, but your health will suffer with some food faster, some food longer. Some people say, oh, my grandfather was eating everything and lived 110 years. Well, 110 years is still baby in a genetic chain of 600 and plus years that our life should last. And it doesn't because of these stupidities that we are taking and we are even explain this through a Bible. Bible says that once when we start eating forbidden food, we were kicked out of Eden. Well, we, did, we are not kicked out of Eden. We basically destroyed our Eden. We destroyed our body. And uh, later on, even uh, Sumerians explain in their tablets that gods, those who, who from heaven came, Nephilims, introduced them to cultivating grain and using grain for food. They did not do it before. And no wonder the, the age, the longevity dropped from 600 to less than 200 years. So well, it's evidence is everywhere, but we are not allowed to look. We are brainwashed to believe what we are being told and don't, don't even acknowledge what you see. Well, it's time to snap out of it. Learn the truth. It's, as there is only one good diet for whale, there is only one good diet for shark, there is only one good diet for tiger, there is one good diet for horse, there is one good diet for human. No if and doubts. We may even worse stupidity by saying that different people, according to what sports they do, they should eat differently. Oh, we have experts up to Gasuch. Everywhere you look, there is expert. And all together, they cannot screw one light bulb. Thank you for being here. 
food for thought. See you next time. Love you all.